Hello everyone and welcome back to this. I've chopped off all my hair but it's still not made me any faster channel. Today we, uh, well we've chopped off all our hair but we're still not any faster. I thought maybe might be a bit more streamlined, a bit, bit better for slipstreaming maybe but no, it's not uh, It's not worked out that way. Got a bit of a different double whammy for you today. Um, I've for a few weeks been running in a Arca League um, but it's been nice sometimes just to race completely off camera and just sort of race for fun. Um, and it has been really fun. I've been really enjoying this series um, to the point where the race have been so good that we're sort of post-filming this first race that we're going to get. So it's a double whammy, two races in this video. Um, second one is sort of your, your standard um, sort of layout on the screen. But this first one, using the powers of SDK, we've managed to recreate the race. Um, TV cams in there, got it from the cockpit and there's some, uh, some overlays with the standings and the relative and stuff like that on there. Um, so Arca in the league. Um, starting off at Daytona, let's jump on in and see how it goes. So we're heading into the race, I'm thinking to myself, we'll just try and play it calm, play it safe, stay out of trouble. It's going to be a 30 lap race, so plenty of time to make some moves, especially in the early laps, we'll just hang right at the back and just stay out of trouble and just let the race start to unfold. Maybe some guys at the front will uh, be a bit impatient, take themselves out. And we might get a, free, a few freebies along the way to get us closer towards the front before, uh, before the checkered flag starts coming along. So, doing a bit of brake dragging, just getting a bit of temp into the tyres as we're waiting to come around the green flag. We managed to steady at the start, got a bit checked up on the bottom lane there. We get completely done by the outside lane, but that's absolutely fine anyway. We want to beat the pack. It's crazy how busy 12 of the Arcas in front of you can look on the track, like, you know, only 13 cars on the track, but it looks like an entire pack of angry Arcas about to uh, about to have a massive crash, so just playing it steady, nice and calm, nice and easy off the back, starting to settle into a rhythm, start to see who's going to make some moves, who's going to force the issue, and who's going to hang at the back. Here, immediately lifting going into three and four. Just don't want to be anywhere too close to guys on the first lap in. Never quite sure if someone's going to uh, make a bit of an error on the first lap, get sideways, cause the trick, uh, cause the wreck. So just give myself lots of space. Jules, Gavin Kelly in the 046 there jumping down in front of us. Me and him both jumped into this race with very little practice, i.e., about 10 15 minutes, and came in with the same strategy just to uh, hang towards the back stay out of trouble and try and be there at the end. Already in front they're going three wide through three and four or going into three there. Straight away I'm backing out of it, just being like, I don't want any part of this mayhem that's about to unfold. Just making sure I've got plenty of space so I can get on the brakes if and when the crash comes. Across the line, onto lap three. Still a long way to go. Run up the back stretch once again, three wide across the track. It's just dropping off the pack a little bit too much this time, so We'll take the run a little bit more, just trying to close up. Finally got a nice fresh eye gap that we can work towards so we've seen them start to get a little bit loose in front of us. And they're still bumping and finally see smoke. Going into corner, gave ourselves lots of space. We had lots of time to react. You could see the cars getting squirrely way in advance and just off the power, starting on the brakes, get it slowed down and stayed out of trouble. It's back for the restart outside lane this time. We think to ourselves, be a bit more aggressive this time, try and get a decent jump. So we're nice and early on the power. Then our lane just checks up completely. Steve Ange does the biggest booty wiggle that I've ever seen, <laughs> manages to save it. We just get right out of the throttle, just giving lots of space to gather it back up and that puts us back to the back of the grid again, which again is no problem. 
even Chris Forrester in that green 41 in front of us there in the monster car is a lap down on us um, but even Chris goes in front of us there so we took him behind Gareth what I didn't realise at the time is that Gareth was uh, carrying damage and was a lot slower than the pack so we're now in trouble we've basically lost the draft here absolutely keeping it pinned through three and four praying that we get enough draft that we can get back into action but then we'll get saved another crash coming out of four on the tri -oval. and that's an absolute lifeline for us as we go under yellow once again managed to stay with the pack and we didn't get wrecked Oh yeah, that was a lucky break. That was a really lucky break. So we give Ange a lot more space this time after uh, sniffing his butt before. So fairly tardy restart for us, but again, that's all good. Only just closing up on halfway in the race at this point, so still don't need to be doing anything too aggressive. Finally, the pack starts to go single file and just be patient and uh, log some laps. No sooner are we relieved about the single file <laughs> than Keith Schooling comes up on the outside all the way around the outside on the bank in there and just get basically to the front of the pack we're still happy hanging here at the back last in line on the bottom lane more shoulder barging up front and you know that that car is going to rejoin somewhere and eventually it goes and again <laughs> three and four wrecking but again we've given ourselves lots of space going into the final corner and managed to keep our nose clean stay out of the pit lane no damage live to fight another day and surely at this point there's cars that have used the fast repair and they're going to be out of contention so you think to yourself you know we might be in for a decent result here at least you know keeping it keeping it out of the pit lane Stay in there with a clean car. Now restarting in fourth position. A better restart this time. Being towards the front, we could be a bit more aggressive, getting on the power straight away. We actually had a run that we could have gone three wide there, but just breathe off the throttle again. Keeping it in two uh, two lines. To really drop in behind Melia here. Who then leaves us hanging out there by ourselves. So we just lift off the throttle again, back straight, hugging the wall. Anyone that wants to go past, we just let them go as we drop to the back once again. Eric behind us decides to do the same thing as well in the 55. I don't know if he got boxed in by us slowing down or if he did it by choice, but either way. Eric behind us, and then we're basically back of the pack over than Eric. Melia goes spinning but no caution and that gave Eric the run to get around us up behind Ange here, we started to lose the pack at the front, but I've worked with Ange quite a few times on different tracks, trust him, happy to work with him, it's going to give him a bit of a, uh, a bump draft, but schooling down on the apron, finally we come undone, come unstuck, and that is a very damaged arc, you can see how far left hand down it is, and a meatball for good measure, so we need a lap round, wait for the pits to open, we're going to need to go and take our fast repair, 
Now, fast repair is not too much of a problem because you know you've got it, you know you're going to get the car fixed, but that's like your final get out of jail free. Like, we've got to keep a clean car now if we're going to get a result. We start in eighth, get a nice tame restart, didn't need to push it too much being this far back in the back. At this point of the race, the whole energy just felt different to see the sparks coming, flying off the windscreen there. Absolutely awesome graphical effects by iRacing. We'll comment on it after race, how, uh, how amazing that was looking, but the whole the whole ante seemed to have been upped from that restart. Everyone was sort of jockeying for position a little bit more, right on the limit of sending it into the corners. More people were taking the run and swapping lanes and really trying to figure out where they could be fast versus the others. You can see from the battle box in the bottom right there, there's actually quite a few cars mixed amongst us that are lapsed down, so Chio in the 24. There's the 014 in this race, in fact, um, is a lap down. And then Forrester in the monster car just to our outside there in the 41 is also a lapped car. See one's laid up against the wall there, Gareth. Uh, actually just got disqualified for not serving a penalty, I think it was. So he just stayed high and wide. It was a bit hairy coming through the tri-oval, but we all got away with it. Now basically all in, full, in one line, except for Chris White and Chris Forrester on the outside there. We take the high line just to test how the run is, but immediately back out. It's just a test, just wanting to see how powerful the, the draft was, but as we almost go three wide going into three with tools, think better of it. And that actually puts us all the way to the back. Even Gareth gets back past us, even though at this point I think he's already carrying his black flag. Three wide, four wide even in front of us down the back stretch. Again, just breathing out of it, but almost losing the draft again, so having to keep it pinned a little bit. So it gets really loosened up into the wall. So that tricky balance between needing to keep it pinned to catch the draft, but not wanting to be too close just as the car stopped dancing and not wanting to get involved in any crashes. Melia, despite going spinning by himself across the tri-oval, got saved by the caution, is now actually fighting for position with us, so he's in front on track. Alarin up in the wall there on the high side, but again he was lapped, a lapped car anyway. Chucks in behind us as we jump up. Taking the run again to the outside just to test it. See how bumpy it is though. Back around to the tri-oval, two to go at the line. Find ourselves on the bottom lane, but absolutely boxed in by the cars in front. Got a couple of cars just to our right-hand side, so we can't change lane, can't get up to the top. But we know that if we're going to start making some moves, then we need to start making them right now. Coming down the back stretch, we are absolutely boxed in with no Melias there. Give Jules a little tap there, really just didn't anticipate just how fast the run was for us. Give him a little love tap, but no harm, no foul. 
And even though it's a lap down, we've still got Malarin to our outside, so we can't even swap lanes if we wanted to. Cars are super bumpy around turn three, uh, round four, sorry. Fortunately, there was just a little gap that Tour had left that we could go and fill, so we didn't wipe out. And then me and him both swap lanes there, do a crisscross. I go up the top. Because now at least I'm third in lane rather than, uh, I think I was fifth in lane coming through the tri oval, so. Three across the track, but still in sort of two defined lines coming out of turn two. But then contact. I think it was Chris White just knocked into Jake at the front. That opened the door and we just pin it down the outside. Another cargo spin, I think that was Melia. And so now we're at the top, Chris White down below, and we've got a lapper coming up in front. I know Jules is just behind us, so I've put a little bit of a squeeze on just trying to box him in. And somehow we'll get the run around the outside of Chris. And Jules doesn't get enough of a run, decides to push us to the line. P1 at Daytona. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> Go for a victory wiggle straight across the grass. First win on a super speedway. Absolutely epic. Until I don't win very often, I forgot all about the victory donuts. So eventually we'll bring it back around to the tri-oval. Ready to burn the house down. Unbelievable result. Went into it only trying to beat our yardstick was Chris and Steve Ange. And to actually end up with the win. Yeah, couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. That was such a tense race and it was uh, it was so good to have won that one. First one on the Super Speedway. I think that's my first ARCA win in general, to be honest. Um, so great group of guys to be racing with. Really fun um, sort of pack racing there. On the old Daytona as well with the bumps, it was... Uh, yeah, it was a, a hairy little fair laps was that. Um, so yeah, absolutely epic race. Let's jump straight into the next one. So this is sort of two weeks later. The series is every two weeks. Um, so this one is Thompson. And um, I'll have to leave the link to the video that Gareth made for the LOA. We have basically been gifted an entire new setup. So the Logitech is gone. Um, we're on a CSL Elite wheel and pedals. And yeah, we've literally thrown this, the kit together like 10 minutes before this race started. So we've done like three laps in practice, <laughs> opting not to qualify for this series. Um, starting from the back, let's jump on in, see how we get on. All right, we're here in the ARCA, or the Limited Adhesion Development League series. It's the first one of these that I'm recording. Uh, I think this is like race seven, might be race six, something like that. We're actually leading the championship right now and had an absolutely mega run at Daytona last time out which was reason enough for me want to, uh, to want to film this race just so that we could insert the clips that if this makes it to the internet you will have already seen I can definitely speak right now You'll already know from the intro also that this is my first race ever using the new gifted setup from the guys a whole community at Limit of Adhesion I have done a grand total of about three laps on it, I think, so far. So, still very much trying to figure out how the brake works. But we're just here for a good time. And if we get a result, then awesome. And if not, then it's probably to be expected. So this is the way we've played the series the whole time. We've uh, not qualified, started from the back. Just tried to stay out of trouble and uh, enjoy what happens along the way. I'm sure a lot of my buttons are not hotkeyed. So, we'll find out through the race what's going to come a cropper. As it stands, we're about to go green. So let's try and settle in, learn the equipment. And boogity boogity boogity, let's go Arca racing. We play it nice and slow. Take it really gentle on these tires. So this wheel is a lot bigger than, uh, than the Legitech one, so Still getting used to how much wheeling I actually need to do with it. Oh, Chris into the wall hard. Oh, oh, that was nearly the first breaking boo boo. Oh, Marin's gone bumpering on Chris. 
They finally go around, we get 4x, and no caution. We do have cautions in this, so I was expecting a caution there, to be honest. But now that we've got a bit of fresh air, let's see if we try and catch these boys a little bit. We set the fastest lap in qualifying, uh, sorry, in practice, we didn't qualify, obviously. Set the fastest lap in practice um, with 20.6, but that was probably pushing pretty hard, to be fair, trying to get used to the braking markers in this car and on this pedal. So I wouldn't want to be tw setting 20.6s in the race, to be honest, it'll, uh, it'll just fry the tyres. Need to keep an eye on the lap times though, see uh, see if we're dropping back too far. I'd like to think if the guys at the front are pulling away this quick that they'll probably chew the tyres up and they'll come back to us in the race. That happened at the, the race at Charlotte. Um, but then a caution saved the guys that had chewed the tyres at the front and we all came back together. Can't even remember what position I finished in that one now to be honest, but... Yeah, very much a tyres game in this Arca race. If we go caution free that is. Slowly catching Messer ahead of us. Don't know if we're catching the entire pack or not. I did remember to set the brake bias adjust to a hotkey before we went live on the wheel, so uh, as the front tyres start to scrub too much, we'll play around with the brake bias. Move a bit further rearwards, see if we can keep the fronts alive. It's a 75 lap or so. Starting to close back in on them. Let's see if we can make some magic happen through this one. Starting to feel that like scrubbing now, just on corner entry, so... Start moving the brake bias. I've got a couple of clicks at a time when I feel like it's necessary. Of course, the other thing that might happen with the... Uh, with the tyres dying for everyone is we might see more mistakes, we might start seeing people do solo spins, so... It's not over in terms of cautions. Getting ourselves back up towards the front. Messer's just going to let us go there. It was very uh, noble of him. Didn't even try to put up a fight. Ducked down low. Obviously, I caught him from about three seconds there, I think it is, so... Start working on Steve Ange now. Up to fifth place. Steve Ange is our other uh, sort of title rival. I think it's me from Chris from Steve. Dick Weaver's currently got the highest rating in this, uh, sort of in this race. But for whatever reason in this arc, it just seems to keep getting killed. It's not had the best of campaigns so far. Just showing for Eric so far up there in P2. I think Eric got pole, in fact, didn't he? So. Quick glance at the standings. I think I'm lapping fastest on track, which is purely a result of looking after the tyres to begin with. It's not that I'm going faster than anyone else. It's just they're going slower than what they were at the start. I just starting to scrub again, so we'll go for another click of brake bias. Outside. First time running right down low here. Oh no! We didn't get the move done in time. Damn, son. Alright, I'll back up to 5th then. Uh, I'm just going to do what the leaders do, to be honest. If they take tyres, then so will I, because we'll be in the same boat. Ah! Nearly blew my engine up. <laughs> Doesn't look like anyone's gone in for some. 
A bit early to be fair. Alright, he's starting to come back around the green. Put my brake bias back all the way forwards because the fronts will have cooled down a little bit. I need to be careful that I'm not leaving my foot resting on the brake down the straights. Noticed under caution that we're here. Uh, <laughs> Noticed under caution that I was just leaving my foot on the brake a little bit. Just resting there, but it was enough to uh, to be given a bit of brake force into Sim, so... I'm gonna get cleared by, uh, by Brian, that's fine. Go back to the tyres game. Brian goes pretty high there, might get him on exit there. Looking up to return Jake at the restart just there, I uh, I don't know if I was just too aggressive on it or whatever, but obviously as soon as I bumped him I got out of the throttle again, gave him time to clear it up, which he did. And we all live to fight another day. was nervous of Eric coming back down there. Obviously, uh, he needed to make the corner, but I didn't want to go and fill a gap that he was he was about to go and fill. Sort of disappearing wedge as Jake gives us a tap. Don't need to fight that one too early here. Steve looks to be struggling a little bit there, Steve Ange. Jake's got us, uh, got us cleared again here as well. Gonna get Andrew on the outside here, I think. Gonna get a much better run off. Thought we're about to clunk the wall, but we'll get away with it. Oh, we're in way too hot there. Don't know if this tyre performance is just sort of a, a byproduct of us looking after them up before the caution there, or, or what's going on, but. Seems to have a bit better speed versus the other guys. Just on tyres, really. It just seems like I can put my car places that they can't right now. A lot of them, at least. Although, having said that, Cho's obviously just driving away. It's the only way Cho knows. Alright, big scrub up there. We're going to do the brake bias again. Down the straight here. Didn't take long for them to uh, to get back to where they were before in terms of eat and scrubbing. So just go back to the long game strats then. Just take it easy. If we can stay at 21 flats the whole run, which is what I think we were doing before the caution, then eventually Tours tyres will uh, will start to die off and it'll drop back towards us. Although that was not a 21-0, so we'll see how that plan plays out. Not even close to 21 flats, in fact. Not sure where our own pace has gone there. Maybe just took a bit too much out making those moves. Not even halfway yet, though, so not too stressed so far. I was actually noticeably slower than these two in front of us that last lap there. A couple of tenths off in one lap is pretty bad around a short track like this. My biggest problem will be if we get a late caution where we all swap onto tyres. I'm not very good at short runs on fresh tyres. I just, I'm not aggressive enough, I don't fire them up.
That's the dropping back into jewels. There's clutch here as well behind us. Slow car down low might bring out a caution. It's going into the pits by the look of it, Eric. There's something missing right now, I don't know what it is. I don't particularly want to try and push and find it because that's when we'll over push and make uh, make a mistake and spin. But we're three tenths off what Cho's doing. He's on the same side of tyres that we are. We're not even taking good lines anymore either. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't really know what's going on to be honest. I think all in all we need a fresh set of boots, but not going to get get one unless there's a problem for someone else. It's this corner where I seem to be losing all the time, so let's see if I can find a better line through it. That was a bit better. I expect lap times to be uh, to be in the 22s fairly soon, so we'll see if if we can hold the pace. Sort of 21.67 is what we've been doing so far this run. We can maintain our pace again and see if the leaders start dropping back towards us. Jake's just done a 22, so bad luck for him. Pulling Jules along with me though, because we only get to halfway through. Uh, if I'd do it my plan, I'd rather sort of do it solo if that makes sense. Although, having said that, we probably owe, owe Jules one after pushing us to the win at Daytona. Almost a wall for us there. Again, lost a lot of time this lap. It's not ideal. Daniel in front of us. Not making it particularly easy for Jake. Jake, a big sideways moment. Massive sideways moment on the power there. Don't know if we'll get him cleared around the outside here. I think we might do, to be honest. We've been turned! And a caution. Oh, that's so sad. We're definitely going to go for some boots. <laughs> I've got no mic to reply. Oh, all right, coming back around to green then. Everyone around us is on fresh tyres, but if this goes to the end, then... We still need a good set of tyres underneath us, so we're going to have to be gentle with them. Green, green, green. The next car's the 
laid up. Messer and delayed. Look after the tires. These two will keep themselves slow by scrapping, which is good because it means I can keep myself slow then to save tyres without sort of dropping back away from them. Plus, they'll be absolutely ragging the tyres by staying side by side like this for lap after lap. So this is working very nicely for us. Only thing is, it's also working nicely for Messer. It wasn't Messer, it was Ange behind and he's gone. And just gone round behind us. No caution either. Brutal. I didn't do Messer solidifies P1 then from Chu, who has led the entire race up till now, I think. But they have chewed their tyres hard in that little battle. Cho's gonna dive it in. It's too much of a dive. It's a big hip check. All locked up on the way in. Wouldn't be too happy with that if I was Messer, who then goes deep himself. Oh, maybe clip the wall there as well. Twenty more laps to by. Twenty laps to nurse these babies for. It was after about eight laps on that first run that the guys started coming back towards us, so fingers crossed. Our more sort of um, smooth way of driving. I don't know if it's smooth, but it's very laid back in the early stages. Hopefully that pays dividends for us as Chua gets all kinds of sidewards. Going to make the move. Tyres will be very hot from all the moves he's been doing. Even if we don't get the move done, it'll just give him something to think about. He's pounced off the wall. Alright, if we're looking now, we'll just run away from them. Let's see. Still don't want to take too much out of the tyres. Tio does love a bumper, so we'll see how this goes. Try to give him space where I could. My favourite way to make fun of Chua is to wind him up about the amount of times he's run into the back of me. <laughs> it has happened a fair few times over the races we've been involved in. Never aggressive, never potentially, uh, never potentially intentional, but yeah, we've certainly come off second best a few times. to go when we cross the line this time. I think Chio's just taken way too much out of his tyres in that battle there with Messer. Messer started sending it deep as well. Um, obviously eventually we ended up in the wall and we cut underneath him. Bit nervous of these guys, obviously they're battling for position quite hard in front of us, 7th, 8th and 9th. We need to try and get through without losing too much time. Or tyres. Or getting caught up in any incidents that they might have. There's one. Alright, we'll try not to run into Eric again under blue flags like we did in the Beetle race in Silly Season. He's out there somewhere. I don't know where, but he's out there somewhere. That was a wall. That wasn't ideal. And Jules is right back. Oh, it's Tour again, sorry. He's right back with us. 
Shaw's having a cheeky look in there. Cheeky cheeky. Alright, I think we did alright through that to be honest. A couple of slow laps of course getting it clear but... We should have the pace now just to pull back away. Well, that's not ideal though. Back on the brake bias adjustments again. That's what we need, a 21 flat. I'm fairly short here, I won't be able to live with that. So that's a 21.5, so we pulled half a second in a lap there. In fact, he's getting done by Jake. Now Jake can save his tyres, so this might be an interesting end. Jake's lap times will be interesting to look at. That car is a lap down. Nice times from Jake from, from behind us there. Oh god, that's not the way to do it. Just gotta keep him alive. Keep the heat out the front. He's definitely coming though. He might have judged it to perfection. I need to stop with that silly stuff. to go. I'm just going to go super high for us by the looks of it. Just remember I'm not racing him into the corner there, just look after the tyres. Jake goes in, he's sideways though. That might have been his chance. All crossed up on entry there. Jesus, that was a, do you know what? That was a mega save. That was absolutely unbelievable. Gets clear now though, and Jules is 0.2 behind him as well. Those two are gonna have a great scrap across the line, depending on who's got the better boots. I would have said Jake before he's just gone in uh, gone in sideways, but let's see how much he can still preserve him. Jake got a much better run through the traffic there than I did. Gonna have to start pushing. White flag. A terrible line from me yet again. He's coming in and he's turned us. And he's straightened us. And we are clear, I think. <laughs> oh, dearie me. He was very sporting there to give it up and straighten me out and also lose second position there to Jules. <laughs> First race on the new kit. <laughs> it's a P1. <laughs> oh dear me, how much fun was that? <laughs> oh jeez Louise, what a race. <laughs> Straighten your back out. I did not want to win it that way. Two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> that has put us firmly at the top of the standings now, which is absolutely insane. Like I said, just jumped into this uh, this series and this league for a little bit of fun. Enjoy running the Arca. No, it can be a bit of a beast. Never imagined that we'd be stopping, stopping, oh my lord, topping the standings charts. Um, I think we're about midway in the season now, so uh, yeah, still lots of races to go, but yeah. 
sitting up there pretty at the top of the minute. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I'll leave links in the description below if you want to come in uh, and join the league as well. This this series on the oval side is um, aimed more as like a development series for people that were new to um, new to iRacing, potentially new to oval racing, because we're running totally free tracks. Obviously, ARC is a paid car, but it's a useful car, car to have anyway, um, but all free tracks. So, yeah, if you're interested in getting in any of the uh, the oval league stuff, I'll uh, leave the links for the Discord in the description below. Um, but yeah, that's going to be everything for this one, so you know the drill. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumb. If you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumb down. Drop us a comment, let us know why, and consider subscribing. If you're new here and not done that already, on that, take it easy and look after yourself. I'll catch you in the next one.